podcast. I am your host, TS Cosplay, TXTV, Taylor, whatever you want to call me. Right here, we have Moose down there. We have Lazy Pool Forest. Today is the day of part three of the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. I didn't know until uh, watching the episode last night that it was part, there were parts, not chapters or episodes, just parts. Um, anyway, before we get started, I just want to say that I do want to do some more gaming stuff, gameplay stuff. Uh, I don't, there's just not a lot out right now, and I don't like rehashing. Like, I love playing Battlefront, but there's only so much you can do in capturing Battlefront. I'd love to do more Apex stuff. Maybe I'll do another Apex series. Apex, like, we have the Dynasty of Thickness, but Thickness. Um, now that we have another Thick Boy in Apex, we probably could do that again, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll do a playthrough or something. Who knows? The next thing is that we'd love to have more guests on the podcast. So if you are interested in talking about the Kenobi show or the Ahsoka show or the Mandalorian season three or whatever, let us, let me know in the comments below or send me a DM on Instagram. I will get to you about it. Um, uh, and we can figure it out. Cause I would love to have more people on. I also want to do more podcasts, like stuff, incorporating cosplayers, like cosplay. Would you rather cosplay, you know, just talking about cosplay in general. Anyway, let's get into our opinions of Part three of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series and general consensus, as we always start off with the Dead Kings podcast. Brady, give us your general consensus. Dude, love this episode. Seriously, probably like I, I loved it. It was all impactful. And that's what I want from an episode. I want it to impact me. And it was. Forrest, what about you? Um, it didn't hit the same way for me. There was a lot more low points towards the end than high, but. Okay. We'll get there when we get there. Um, so I'm, I'm there with Forrest is, it, uh, I really loved the first, the first 70%, 80%, the last little bit, and, and we'll get into that. So, um, just starting off the episode, Obi-Wan is on, they're on that transport ship and Obi-Wan's meditating, trying to reach out to Qui-Gon. They're teasing us so hard with Qui-Gon. You better do something quick. You have three episodes left. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Do you guys think we'll see uh, have anything about about Qui Gon? I'd like to see him. I think it'd be cool. I mean, La Force Ghost. It'd be nice to hear his voice react to Obi Wan. You know, as you're reaching out to him, I think that'd be cool. I'd like to see him, or at least hear him, because I did some more research, and he actually can't appear as a Force Ghost. He never learned how to, but he knows how to project his voice. Okay. Okay. Um. Well, I learned. Yeah. Anyway, so. Which is really weird, though, because Obi-Wan, I guess, has been studying for 10 years how to reach out to Qui-Gon, because in Revenge of the Sith, at the end, Yoda says what he says about being able to speak with people who have gone to the other side and stuff like that. But let's get into, you know, he's trying to meditate to Qui-Gon. He keeps hearing all those voices from the past. Then we get to Vader being assembled. Like, just relive, relive the episode. What did you think? Honestly, like, it was so cool to just see, like, everything, uh, like, getting him getting assembled, and, like, it was just intimidating. Every piece that got added, the robotic legs, I just pictured him kicking through a door, and then, like, the ne- like all the, the pipes coming off so smooth, although I did expect when he pulled them off the back that he was going to have to, like, scream, because it was going to pull out, you know, out of his body or something, but they just came right off. But other than that, it was, like, just intimidating. Like, they were building him up more and more through the whole thing. Mm. I really enjoyed seeing the, the like uh, Tony Stark style uh, suiting up. I love seeing mm. how more intricate it is than we've seen in the past. Because when it says we just see uh, the legs come in, we don't really see them attached. And yeah. Next thing we see is just the helmet coming down on top. But this was really good. I really like how they added it in. And weren't you saying something about him? Kind of, you didn't know if it was Hayden or not. You couldn't tell if it was. Yeah. Um, I couldn't tell if it was actually Hayden or if it was just CGI because it just looked really waxy and fake. And and that's kind of for me. Attack me if you want. I felt like from this to Vader's castle, around Vader's castle, all did seem pretty... It didn't look good to me. It was nice to see Vader's castle again, but when he was inside on his throne, the background, everything around him just looked really... You could tell it was green screen and maybe... They're still on that um that that screen dome that they use for everything now. I think they should have built an actual set if they didn't. 
If they did, that's probably the worst looking set I've ever seen. But uh, it just it, it didn't it didn't hit right for me. Like it was really cool. Like the, the lines, the dialogue when he says he's basically like, if you can get Kenobi for me and and do what you need to do, you'll be the new Grand Inquisitor. But if you fail me, you will not live to regret it. And I'm like, Ugh! Ugh, Vader. But Vader is back. Um, what did you guys think of the 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 throne room? His throne, I his castle. It. I thought it was super cool. I know we see it in Rogue One, but I couldn't really remember it. And seeing it again was just super cool. And to see Vader like on a throne, this whole thing was just Vader intimidation. That's what this whole episode was. It was Vader propaganda that made me afraid of him, and it worked. <laughs> Like, everything to me was just intimidating. And I know that, like, you know, like, his castle, I didn't really remember it. So the fact that I got to see this almighty Vader in a castle was, like, really cool for me. What about you, Forrest? Um, I think it would have been better if it didn't look like the seat of the chair or the throne was, like, four inches wide. And also, if he put his full weight on it, it would fall apart. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was sitting on it so tenderly. Like, you could see him kind of shuffling when he's talking to Reva. Like, it, it just looks uncomfortable, but that might be for different reasons. I don't know. Um, I like seeing Vader's castle. I just, in Rogue One, it looked a lot more darker than it did here. And I like the darker aspect of it, but that's just me. It was, it was nice to see it again, you know, in a live action thing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just when he stood up and went and looked out the window, it didn't it didn't hit right for me. It just it looked really, really odd. Um, but you know that is what it is. And then we have they go down to the uh, mining planet, and Leia and Obi Wan are talking. And Obi Wan explains what it feels like to use the Force and to have the Force. And he ex- he says, you know, you know what it's like when you're in a room in a dark room and there's no lights. And he's she's like, yeah, it's scary. You don't know where you're going. And he says. And then how does it feel when you turn the light on? And she says, it feels good. He says, that's what it feels like to use the force. And I really love that we finally got like an explanation of what it feels like to use the force, to have the force. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on that other side, it's, you can understand how it would feel to be more hungry for more power mm-hmm. and to yeah, be able absolutely. to see more and have more. Like it's, it's very, it puts that into perspective. Um, anyway, so they get to that, that uh, planet and they're walking through that field, and Obi Wan is explaining, "Hey, this is, you know, there used to be families and villages, and now the Empire, which is really weird. It's like there used to be families here and villages, and it's like it just looks like a regular mountain. Like it doesn't like yeah. look like like like. So we had to do two takes of this because the audio got corrupted. But that's the thing I didn't mention in the first thing is, it didn't look pillaged. It didn't look yeah. like it didn't look- houses had been burnt or things had been taken down. It just looked like." A mountain. It looked barren. Yeah, it looked it looked barren, um, which is really weird because kind of that's a little bit of the thing the Book of Boba Fett suffered from is there he's like my people need me, this city needs me. And it's like nobody looks like they're oppressed. Nobody looks like like yeah. there was one thing where like the Empire was pushing a guy and stuff like that, but I don't know. Anyway, Obi Wan has another PTSD moment. And he thinks he sees Revenge of the Sith Anakin in the field. What do you guys think of that? Go ahead, Forrest. Um, I thought it was interesting to kind of show his PTSD like that, where he's seeing hallucinations. I thought they were going to go a different way than what they did, because you see Anakin look over his shoulder, then it looks away, and then you see him facing him, it looks away again, and I thought he was just going to be right there in the camera when Obi-Wan a looks jump back. Scare, yeah. For a big, big freaking jump scare, but it, it didn't do that. He was, he was gone, man. Yeah, that would have scared the crap out of me if they did that, so I really appreciate that they didn't. The thing that hit me with this so powerfully was, like, the whole episode, I was like, you are my brother, Anakin, that he says in in, in episode three, uh, or, in, yeah, episode three, and I was like, man, that's all I feel right now. I was like, these two brothers duking it out, and, like, one, like, is so upset how everything ended, and he wants to make amends, while the other is like, I- I'm gonna I'm gonna make your life horrible. I'm gonna make your life horrible, and they're like, all that emotion, though, like, was hitting me basically the whole episode. So when I saw that, I was like, ah, oh, man, don't do this to me. Don't do it. <laughs> don't make me sad. Uh, it seemed really weird and out of place for me. I didn't I didn't hate it. It was really cool, but it just, 
I don't know. It, it did. It did just push towards you know Obi Wan's PTSD. Now, uh, the next thing that we get is they go back and um, they go back to uh, it's that underwater planet or that underwater base yeah. that's from Jedi Fallen Order. Um, and I don't know how I didn't hit that on the head the last time, but they're talking about now. Apparently, all the other Inquisitors want to be the Grand Inquisitor, and Forrest mentioned that he thinks that. Reva uh, put the blame on the Grand Inquisitor dying on Obi-Wan. I personally think that she just mentioned that because Forrest said, yeah, Vader didn't even care that the Grand Inquisitor died, which yeah. that's a whole argument in and of itself where people are like, well, the Grand Inquisitor's in Rebels, but he's dead here and this and that. And I'm just like, I've never seen Rebels. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to, I'm going to watch it. And, uh, but Anyway, they all want to be Grand Inquisitor, and they're all basically sucking up to the boss to become Grand Inquisitor, essentially. Um, yep. And Reva goes to sit in the Grand Inquisitor's seat, and the weird hat dude, who I don't like, I don't like him. I, I don't like him. Um, he stops Reva and like pulls her down. And he's like, "That's going to be my seat." Da 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 da. And I'm just kind of like. We know what's coming. Just give it to us. Just give us Vader versus Anakin versus Obi Wan. Like we 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 know what's coming. Anyway, anyway, Reva wasn't as bad this episode. Like I, if anything, it was that weird hat guy who I didn't like because he just uses this really bad Batman voice, and it's just annoying to me. The Batman voice is annoying to you. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, this isn't about Batman for us. Like this isn't about Batman. Anyway. <laughs> Stay on subject. Anyway, so we actually see them shoot out the probe droids because they're they're sending the probe droids out to that planet. And, uh, you know, Obi-Wan, then we get the stint of Obi-Wan and Leia running into this new character we haven't seen. Brady, would you like... The Mole Man! Okay. <laughs> the Mole Man! Like, I was He's so there. excited. I saw... A clip of this guy and i was so excited because i love fun characters like this right like for some reason star wars makes it the funniest characters are always the aliens to yeah. me like i don't know it, it, and i was super excited for it until he walks around to get in his truck kenobi and leia and you see the imperial flag and like oh no <laughs> and it was just like it made me so mad because it was like something we all know where we see those trucks with the big flags on them or the big stickers for yeah. political parties. And you're like, oh, it's so tacky and gross. And then when he's like, yeah, a little bit of order is nice. And I'm like, oh, don't say <laughs> that. It's the Empire. Stop. <laughs> and he was like a fun, nice character. And then we get to the final checkpoint and he's like, Got a couple weirdies in the back. I check them out. <laughs> like, you nerd! You imperialist <laughs> nerd! Like, I wanted to like you! Now, let's... let's he, like, let's... I thought we were going to get some kind of thing with the Mandalorian where it's like, hey, I can help you out, I can help you out. And and he becomes, like, a good guy, but we don't. And he... And he so, I, so, I'm, I'm kind of glad that he didn't. <laughs> let's, let's, fill in the, let's fill in the blanks there. That, you know, when he's in the... Ch For me, here's the sandwich. What happened? They get into the car and they they tell the lie of hey we're from Tolan or Tolis or they're from a planet. Or yeah, they're from Tol. They get in, they're going, they stop, and they're this whole time they're talking back and forth through the through the window, the backseat window of that their tr the truck. They're, they're speaking regular, you know. They're not yelling to the guy. He can hear them. They get into the car. They're going or the truck. The uh, the M the, he stops, picks up some stormtroopers. Obi Wan flubs up and calls because he was calling. He, they were going that Leia is Obi Wan's daughter, and they're just well. First, here's the here's the here's the weird thing. He said that they were just going back, and they were here, and they just got turned around. But then they said that they stopped here because they're meeting up with some friends. And I'm like, that's one big red flag too, because the guy would have been like, uh, you said, but no. Um, Obi Wan flubs up and calls Leia Leia instead of being call calling her Luma like he said that was her name, her cover name. And the um, the uh, the stormtroopers are like, "You called her Leia. 
her name's Luma. Who are you? And he, Obi-Wan says, oh, sorry. That was the name of her late mother. You know, sometimes I forget. I get confused. And he says, when I look at her, I see her mother's face. And he we, he is talking the truth there. He sees Padme when he looks at her. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts so I much. I don't like it. Um, then they drop off the stormtroopers, and Obi-Wan proceeds to tell Leia what it's like because she's like, she's still struggling with being an Organa, the whole adoption thing. She's yeah. like, you know, you knew my real mom. You know, are you my real dad? And he's like, I wish I was, but I'm not. And it hurts so hard because her real dad is on their heels. Like, he's... And he's evil. And he's evil. He's right behind them. But anyway, uh, he goes on and tells her about what it's like to be a Jedi, how he had a brother and a parents and all that stuff. And he's saying this regularly, regular volume, and you would think that guy can hear him. But then he just stops off and like Brady said, oh, we got a couple of jackalopes flying here. You don't want to check these ones yeah. out. He doesn't say, hey, <laughs> this dude. Dark. You don't say, hey, this dude was talking about being a Jedi. Like he said he was a Jedi. Like he yeah. just he just said who he was. Anyway, the fight scene. What did you guys think of that? I like the fight scene. Um, it's a little inconsistent from how accurate he was in the last episode to this one, this little fight scene, because last one he was – all over the place, and only hit one of the guys, I think, once. But somehow he's bull, bullseye, ah, bull eyeing most of these guys. But I don't know. I liked it. I liked seeing the fight, but eh, just a little inconsistent. Um, I liked it, and I, the only thing I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a force on this one and defend it. I feel like the yeah. reason that he was such a better shot on this one was because now all of his height senses are are heightened again. They're, they're coming back. The whole, whole like, you're, you're, in, you're running from people. You've got people on your tail. You just had close run-in with Inquisitors. So, like, all your senses are on high alert, right? So, you would think his force s- skills are coming back, too. So, that's going to help increase his aiming and everything like that. That's me defending that. I personally liked it. And then when they shoot the dude off the top and he falls on the laser gate and just slices him in half. Slices him in half. I was like, oh! Oh, man! But... I also like the hand-to-hand combat thing, too, because it's nice to know that Jedi did have something in case they did get um, away from their sabers. And it's to me, it's cool. I know we don't really see it. I like it. Other... I like it a lot, yeah. But I like it. Um, and for me to defend the whole shot thing is he was really close to him. That's he, he was awesome. really close. In the last one, uh, in the other episode, he was really far away from that guy, um, the guy on the roof. The other times he was shooting stuff, he was right there um anyway so there's a second uh, troop transport thing that shows up and there's three stormtroopers and an officer i kind of saw this coming personally for me i was like she's letting them walk in front because usually the officer will greet them she doesn't let the stormtroopers go up and there's like they they the officer will go forward so the fact she hung back and then let them go i was like she's gonna shoot him in the back but she's like part of the the resistance rebellion whatever that hasn't been started yet she is there to help she's the contact that the fake jedi gave them um who was supposed to meet them in the field but leia being leia ran up and was like hey help us we're gonna go this way um (laughs) so she gets there and she goes to help them and it just kind of weirded me out how she was so acting all sketchy when they got back to the village because she had, she says she's ex empire says like we saw her with three other stormtroopers. They didn't suspect a thing, but she's walking across a place, a bazaar, a, a village just across the road to this house. Why would you think anything of it? But she's wondering, yeah, yeah. she's like looking like left and right and really shifty. That kind of took me out. I'm like, why, why act this way? Anyway, I know this is kind of breakneck speed, but Obi-Wan, they get in and they see that it's a safe house and there's a lot of messages left by people who are at the safe house. And Brady, you you want to tell him who is back? Why did I just brain fart his name? Quinlan Voss. Um, Quinlan Voss. Yeah, Quinlan... they made your comment. And, and I didn't know who Quinlan Voss was until I looked him up. And then I was like, oh, he's from the Clone Wars. Because yeah. I know we watched a couple episodes with him and I'm like, yes, this is awesome. Because I personally like seeing things we haven't already seen. Like, yeah. you know, Mandalorian. I want to see new characters. And I love live action stuff. 
and to see something come from non live action to live action is always exciting for me. So I want to see other Jedi that I haven't heard of or seen in Star Wars. I want to see that. Yeah. So to see that he came through was like super cool. It's like, yes. Yes. Heck yeah. And, and Obi-Wan, you know, sees like Quinlan was here and it, it was, it's really cool to see that again with Brady. It, it, lesser known characters popping up is really, really cool. Um, yeah. But then temporarily, temporarily, but then we get to the part of Obi-Wan senses some heavy stuff and we see the Inquisitors walk in and they're there for just a little bit too long, too long. And then Vader walks in and this Forrest, you go off. What did you, what did you think about from the time he walked in to the time he was dragging that lady on the ground? It was 100% accurate to Vader in any sort of rendition, uh, books, comics, whatever. It was accurate as heck. It was scary. It was intimidating. It was brutal. Mm. I mean, you can't get any better than that with Vader. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the next snap, the, it was just... He... I wasn't expecting that. I was just was expecting him to push the kid <laughs> against the wall, but instead he just goes. <laughs> yeah, the kid just good night, and he's holding. And it, it, the thing that like you know he was baiting Obi Wan out because he knew he was there because I think he was holding the dad or something, or he was doing something, and he looked over and he looked at the house, and then he he pulls the dad out the out the window, and it just oh my gosh, Brady, what do you have to say about it? Dude, I was puckered this whole scene. Like, pretty much this whole episode, <laughs> I was puckered. Dude, I was. Like, I was like, God, dude, this is scary Vader, man. Like, I'm scared. And, I, like, Forrest has especially has talked about how brutal Vader is. And to just see it, like, they truly brought out Vader. This The Vader that I had heard so much about. The dude that you should be afraid of. But, like, if, if you go off movie Vader's, eh, okay, it's Vader. Like, obviously, he's the bad guy. But he wasn't, like... Oh my God, that's terrifying. If I ran into that man, I'd run the other way. Mm. Now, I don't even want to see Vader. If I see Vader, I'm just going to kill myself for him. <laughs> like, oh, let me help you. Oh, you know? wow. And like watching him drag that lady, like it gave me chills. Like it still kind of does. I'm like, oh, this is. Mom, am I okay to watch this? <laughs> like I'm afraid I needed a permission slip to watch this. Like it got so brutal. Yeah. Um, it, it was, it was definitely, it, it, Brady hit the nail on the head. Brady, there's nothing more I can add. Um, wow. the next thing is uh, we're going to cut out a couple things because Reva catches Leia, the lady that was helping them. She shows up at the end, but we're going to just spend the last little bit here talking about that fight. Um, I'll go first personally for me. I didn't, I, it's not that I didn't like it. I just didn't want to see it. Um, yeah. I want, I like the idea of them not seeing each other for 19 years between revenge of the Sith and episode four. I like that that gap was there, that that was the final fight I would have liked if with this one, there were a couple more of those people, a couple more people, some Vader fodder with the ex Imperial lady. And they're trying to shield Obi-Wan and Obi-Wan's trying to get to that ship with Leia and, Vader's just cutting people down left, right, and center and stuff like that. And Obi-Wan looks back and, you know, he sees he's on his heels and he's, he's you know, slashing people down and Obi-Wan gets away, but that would have fueled Vader. And then we get him in episode four against Obi-Wan. Granted, that fight yeah. wasn't great. It was the first fight. It was what it was. But I, I just, like, even the fight itself did feel like Fan filmish, you know. It, it to me the music, not even the choreography. The choreography is fine. Everyone's like complaining. Obi Wan is so weak. Do something you hadn't done in ten years against someone who had been training and been motivated and rageful and stuff like that and stronger than you. For ten years later, you're not going to be nearly anywhere as what you thought you were going to be. You're going to pull something. Oh. You're going to rupture something. Like. It, it's not going to happen. Um, the, the, the continuity was, was good. Uh, it just, the filming and the music, the music is the number one thing that makes star Wars, star Wars music was awful. I, I won't hear anybody out about it. it. The music was awful. 
um, they got John Williams to come back and do the Obi Wan theme song. I feel like if they were to have Ludwig or John Williams come back and do the music for this fight, because this music sounded like it was from Spaceballs. If I go back and edit this, I will put in the clip of Vader and Obi Wan, and then Lone Star versus Dark Helmet. It sounds the exact same. Anyway, uh, what did you guys think about the fight? Go ahead, Forrest. Um, I feel like the intensity wasn't there. I don't think it should have been a f- fight, if it could even be called that. I feel like it should have been like dead by dead. You're trying to get away from the killer. Yeah. It should have been like the end of fallen a fallen order. Just Vader shows up, Obi Wan like makes another dust cloud or something, or pushes him away. And he's trying just to get away. He does yeah. not want to fight. He doesn't want to do anything. He doesn't even want to be there. He yeah. just wants to go home to his cave. Yep. But because if they clash here, it it takes away everything from A New Hope, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. It's just, there's no point in it. There's absolutely no point. Yep. Brady, what about you? So... I think I have to agree with the music part. Like, I don't remember the music very well, but I was, I'm not going to lie. I was also very scared for Kenobi. I was mm-hmm. like, dude, you should just run. And for me, Ba Ram, you both. Wow. I felt the impact. I was like, dude, I'm terrified of Vader right now. And like he, running away, like he was scared to even ignite his saber. Like Kenobi was against Anakin again. Like that was the part that hit me. It was like, I said already the, we, we you were my brother. And like he's raising a sword to his brother, like he's they're gonna fight again, and he's like doesn't want him. He's like I'm I'm not prepared for this, and he just keeps running away. And it was funny, but at the same time, it was like impactful. I was like, dang, dude, this hurts. This hurts to see mm. them fighting, and Vader just wailing on him too. And like I agree with Taylor, like let's just put it in easy, simple terms. The gym. How many of you go to the gym consistently for a few months and then stop, and then you go back and you can't even lift? Them? even close to the weight that you used to Mm. like same thing. And that's the gym. But for me, it was super impactful. What I would have liked to see music wise though. The only difference that I think would have been the same song that they had in episode three, the, when they were fighting, Mm. I think that would have been cool. Battle of Heroes. Yeah. The dun, 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 and you know, lava's was going over. Yeah. I would have loved to see that. That would have like, I think that would have been impactful as far as like, Oh, this is the same song I played when they fought the first time. If you get a and chance, so sorry he, to cut in. It, sorry to cut in. If you get a chance, go back watch the um, a Geonosis DLC trailer for Battlefront Two. That version would have been freaking sick. Yeah, like a version yeah. like that. If you go back and watch that. Anyway, me personally, I would have liked the music from when Anakin sees the future in the Clone Wars, and he sees that he becomes Vader, and he goes and he's trying to get off planet and kill Palpatine. The very slow, menacing Imperial March. Or, or, or the music before he goes off on the Tuscan Raiders. Yeah, that one too. The, I, 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 I get, I get the intensity, but yeah, break anyway. Yeah, and, and so for me, like I truly loved this fight, like just the brutality of it, like Vader coming out of nowhere, Kenobi's scared out of his mind. He's too afraid to raise his weapon against his brother. He still sees him as his brother, and it was just for me that's where the impact came from. Well, like the emotions behind the fight, and and Vader's still pissed. He's like, I'm gonna kill you, and he's like hitting him and hitting him. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> yeah, and then the and then the fire part. I mean, just that part was sick. That part Dude, was that was that part was sick. Twisted. It, it was twisted. Like the yeah. second Vader knelt down, just you know, and it's like it. You're like, what? if if there wasn't more that he could do. Like, oh my gosh, dude! <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like, it's traumatic. Like, it's, yeah, he was cooking him alive, and that was the thing. The wild thing too is like Anakin sees that saw, sees himself. He did nothing wrong. Obi Wan didn't set him on fire. He told him not to jump. You know, he's like, "Don't do it," and Anakin did it, or Vader did it. Because that's the the funny thing that like a lot of people need to separate. Once Anakin knelt to Palpatine after. Mace Windu got yeeted out of the window. He was no longer Anakin Skywalker. Right, he only right. accepted Padme calling him Anakin. The only yeah. person. Um. Anyway. Uh. But yeah, when he he roasted Obi Wan, we can we all just collectively agree that that was just awesome, but just sick. Yes. Because you yes. you, yeah. you in screams. Obi Wan screams. 
and everything were just so, oh, they're haunting. And you could tell that he just reveled in it. Now, let's just kind of get to the last little bit of it. When Obi-Wan gets saved by the lady in the loader bot, which big ups to the freaking loader bot. Freaking sick. Freaking yeah. love that. Freaking, we're, we love him. We love him. Um, Nothing ever better happened to him. If it does, then I'm... Then we're canceling Star yep. Wars. Yeah, we're canceling Star Wars. It's done. I bought it. It's over. Um, anyway, <laughs> so uh, my thing is a lot of people are, very, are stewing on Vader should have just walked through the fire and got Obi-Wan or grabbed him or something like that while he's in the stormtroopers over. He waited for this now for 10 years. He waited for, he thought of this from the moment he woke up to the moment he sl- he fell asleep or whatever he does for 10 years holding on to this hate. And Obi-Wan was just weak. Like he even says the years have made you weak. And you can just tell that like he w- probably just wasn't satisfied. Like he was just staring at him. He was like, I waited for this. Like, like I was telling Forrest, you make reservations to a, a really exclusive club, a really exclusive diner, really exclusive restaurant. And you go there and your food is bad. It's like, what is the point? Like Obi-Wan's already defeated. There's not much more I can do. Yeah. Like, uh, any other thoughts about that? Just brutal. Just, I, okay, I do want to say, you know what? I was thinking about this because, yes, we did have to redo this because of some technical issues. I didn't like how the, the gal that came and saved him somehow did it by herself with a pea shooter when you have two Inquisitors yeah. there, three Inquisitors there, and you had a Stormtrooper squad, and you had Vader. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Vader could have easily just been like, nope, boom, get you <laughs> out of here. Like, but let's be honest here with how powerful Vader was. He could have just overran that situation, but yeah. with Taylor's argument, I agree. He was bored. People interfered and screwed with it. And he wasn't fighting Obi at full equal. He was fighting capacity. Ben, not Obi-Wan. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me, Ben. And well, he, no, that's what yeah, he was. Exactly. He yeah. was fighting Ben, not Kenobi. And he was, I think he was disappointed. And I think that's why he didn't even bother with her. Yeah, like, yeah. like, like t- to that point when she shoots at the stormtrooper, he doesn't even turn, doesn't even bat an eye. Yeah, he 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 just looks up a couple seconds later. He looks up, sees her, looks back at Obi Wan, and just stares. And then he, Obi Wan gets taken away, and then he just turns around and leaves. Like, but then, in that respect, it, Episode Four, right? That, that should have been like Vader, Vader would not care about Obi Wan afterward. Like, why? Why would he? Why would there's nothing more that he can do to him? Why would he be so pumped when he's on the Death Star in Episode Four? That and this, that is why I'm kind of like uh, it soured it for me. Like I said, I don't hate it. I just didn't want to see it because I like the idea of them not seeing each other for 19 years, opposed to 10 years. I would have been okay with them Vader just getting there right as they're escaping. You see Obi Wan hanging on to the ship door just blasting or reflecting blaster bolts with the saber. Mm. I wouldn't find with that, but yeah, 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 not a full on engagement. Well, so now I'm not sure what's going to happen in the next episodes. They have three more. Leia now seems to be taken by Riva, uh, which means here's the, th- the thing is if Vader somehow interrogates Leia or comes face to face with Leia before a new hope that's going to cause some more issues like because they're already using her to draw out Kenobi. So why wouldn't they do that again? Like, yeah. Oh, I just, I just don't know what they're going to do. I'm not saying I hate it. I just feel my last little sentiments about this are that the book of Boba Fett and this show have gotten so much criticism because they're characters. We already know. So we have expectations. We already have ideas of what they should be doing. I want to do a a video of what we can speculate for the Mandalorian season three, but we can't for the simple fact is Din is a new character. We don't have expectations. We don't know what is going to happen with him next. If we get him three or four seasons, they cut it off. Then we get post sequel stuff. And then he does stuff post sequel. We're like, well, that's not in character with Din because we have expectations. Yeah. With again, the book of Boba Fett and Kenobi like, 
I don't know. I just, I'm containing myself, but I'm also very, very, very curious. We'll just say I'm curious because like we were saying earlier, Brady, uh, this show should have taken place over the 19 years instead of 10 years, a little cutout of something Obi-Wan did helping save Leia. And then what else did he do other than just watch Luke? Yeah. Right. Right. And that's the thing is like, I feel like they could have, that's where you could have thrown in a lot of stuff. A lot can happen in 19 years. Kenobi could have done like some really simple things to save some other people kind of like, you know, helping people out. Like, yes, it's kind of a cliche thing, but we could have seen some small stories, big stories, small stories, big stories, you know, leading all the way up to what happens in episode four. And it's just like, it, it, it just, I feel like they missed a mark and they're taking a small glimpse of what happens and yes. only rolling with that. And I'm like, how important is this really though, to the development of star Wars? And that's where I feel like we run it. Us three run into a lot of issues with episodes and movies and shows of people we already know about yeah. and that whole expectation yeah. thing. And that's why I think a lot of us liked Mandalorian and, and, and Grogu. And that's why they were so successful is because they were new characters. We've never seen. We know no backstories. We are getting completely introduced. Whereas when you have that expectation, it's too easy for someone to screw that up and be like, that's out of character. That's not like totally counteracts or counter dicks what they were in anything else. Exactly. And, and that's just my last little thing here is what are they going to do to top Vader and Anakin? Like the people like, we're going to have to get a second fight with them. I'm like, no, I, I, no, we, we don't because like they had their shot. I personally feel like they missed it. The music, Mm -hmm. the filming, like I said, like it's Anakin and Vader, it's Obi-Wan and Vader fighting each other. You don't want a wide landscape shot of them, of Vader wailing on Obi-Wan. You want, like when Luke was wailing on Vader, was it a cross the throne room? No, it was Vader's POV of how terrifying Luke was in that moment. Yep. Anyway, let's get in to final verdicts. Brady? 10 for me. 10 out of 10. I love the episode. It was extremely powerful for me, and I was on the edge of my seat and felt this episode the whole way through. What about you, Forrest? Ten for Brady. What about you? Um, I'm gonna give it a six, or not a six. Six Whoa. was the last one. I'm gonna yeah. give it a seven. Seven, um, in total. Also because they brought the red lens Vader back. Yes. Touch on that. Yes. Red lens. But yeah, seven. A lot better than the second one. Not as good as the first one, but. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, personally, for me, I don't have a favorite episode so far. I don't. I don't know. Um, I don't hate it, but I just hope that they it makes sense when it ends. Um, I'm giving this a high seven, low eight. Everything up until the fight with Obi Wan and Vader was great. I loved it. Yeah. That just. I don't know. It it just didn't. I don't know. But anyway. That's our thoughts on Kenobi part three. If you like Shaw, want to see more, let us know down below. Subscribe, all that stuff. New stuff is coming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See y'all later.